Let's keep it going. Same energy. Show some love for Mr. Johnny Ginger. Well, I started this long career, uh, thanks to my mom and dad and my brother, when I was six years old. They threw me on stage at the Paramount Theater in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, the act was kind of just laying there. It was a matinee, not too many people, and uh, it just wasn't going. And I used to sing Sonny Boy with my dad when I was a kid in the car, and uh, he said, come on, we're going to do Sonny Boy out there on the stage. And I said, what? So they threw me on. We did this Sonny Boy routine, and it kind of picked the audience up, and the act went over real well. <laughs> I told my mother and dad at the time, I said, I want to be a comedian. And they all laughed at me. And I worked all of the years and I became a comic and now nobody's laughing anymore. I was in uh, Canada, in Windsor, and uh, they were scouting for a host for a summer replacement show at WXYZ. And they were hitting all the clubs and looking at the comics and they liked what I was doing as far as physical things. So I got a card from the producer and he said, come by Monday and audition for the show. So I thought, whoa, I got myself a television show. And I called everybody I knew. I said, I'm going to be on TV. And what I didn't know, there were 29 other comics auditioning for the same thing. I went in and they eliminated and eliminated and I got it. How many people remember the Johnny Ginger show? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Television was in its infancy. Uh, we were uh, late 50s going into it, and it was a new medium. Nobody knew too much about it. Having a television show coming out of nightclubs was a big feather in your cap. All of a sudden, the money went up in nightclubs because I had a television show, and the money just kept pouring in, and I thought, well, this is great. Soupy and I were both written up in Look Magazine as the highest paid local kitty entertainers in the country. Soupy was making 125000 a week. I was making 115000 a week. Now the long wait, 11 o'clock till 5 o'clock. I was hoping that the, our thing here would be way in the front end of the building as soon as you come in because then the people would see us right away. I would introduce cartoons, Clutch Cargo, Courageous Cat, uh, Dick Tracy, and the big one was the Three Stooges. So Mo called me and Mo said, Johnny Ginger, he said, I want to thank you very much for bringing us back. Curly and Curly Joe and Larry and I really appreciate it. And to show you our appreciation, we're doing a movie called The Outlaws is Coming. It's a Western. I said, oh my God. Join the flock, brother. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I want to go home. I want to go home. He wants to go home. I want to go home. Shut up, you cry, baby. <laughs> I got to do, I think, about seven uh, series, uh, national things, which were, I did Twilight Zone, Combat, and I got to meet a lot of wonderful people. Walter Brennan, Academy Award winning star. You do Walter Brennan, you do me, you do it better than I do. <laughs> I would like to do a couple of impressions for you. Do you anybody have anybody in mind that you would like to hear impressions? Sammy Davis. Sammy was a very dear friend of mine. As a matter of fact, he got me on The Rifleman with Chuck Connors, Cuckoo Cachoo. And Sam never got big head where he wouldn't remember old friends. And uh, he was working at the Elmwood Casino in Windsor, and I was doing a special, an adult version of the Johnny Ginger Show at night. And I called him and I said, Sam, would you be my guest? Oi, man. Anytime you want me, tell me where and what time, and I'll be there. It's a gay bar. Lesbian walks in. She's down at the end of the bar. It's summertime. She's got a tank top on. Doesn't shave. Got hair in her eyes. She's trying to get the bartender's attention. <laughs> down here. Down here. Drunk at the end of the bar. She's bartender. Come here. Yes. He said, I would like to buy that ballerina a drink. <laughs> He said, why do you call her a ballerina? He said, anybody can lift their leg that high, it's got to be a ballerina. <laughs> this is stuff I could never do on my television show. <laughs> the demise of the Johnny Ginger show was uh, not very ceremonial. It was terrible. I'm walking down the hallway towards the dressing room and I had to go past Pete Strand's office, the producer. And I walk by and 
He said, hey, great tan. I said, thanks. He said, by the way, the show is over. I said, ah, what show? He said, yours. That was it, very unceremonious. I said, what? 11 years? He said, well, you didn't think it was gonna last forever, did you? I was devastated. And I thought, you know, I've done all these series. I can get back into doing that and be famous, real famous. So I went back out there and they didn't want anything to do with me because of the fact that when I was doing it, I was boosting ratings in Detroit and now I was nobody. Then my mind shut down when I had the nervous breakdown. It was like my brain was saying, I just, I can't do this anymore. And I moved back to Ohio and then I started working in clubs again. That's what I'm doing to this day, doing stand-up. Oh, it's nice to be here. My first time at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, and uh, I've been back in Detroit now for uh, two years. I was gone for a long time, and so good to be back again. I'm gonna have to ad-lib, I can't find a prop. Tom, Vince, Jerry, everybody, we're gonna start the second show. We're gonna start the show in a very short time, folk. And that's the second show coming. Thank you. This is my first time at Genopolis, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. The kids that I entertained when they were like 10 years old, 11 years old, they're like 45 years old now, and these are my nightclub people. It, it never ceases to amaze me when I'm working a club. Nine out of 10 people will come up. I'm a fan, I used to wah bah bah. You remember the time you had your horse on the show? And they recall all these things, they remember it. And it's a real kick for me to know that I made that much of an impression that these people remember those particular bits. What? Hey, Jenner. What? That picture of you in the lobby, that cowboy? Yeah. Was that taken then? What do you mean? 1903. Oh, stop it. Well, what are you, about 100 years old now? Would you cut that out? I've been around a while. Well, hey. Are, are you in good shape, pal? Well, before I came here tonight, I was standing in front of the full-length mirror at the house, and I told Terry I got the body of a 35-year-old man. Well, you better get it back to him, because you're getting it all wrinkled. <laughs> My kids, a lot of times, will say, Dad, are you going to retire? I say, for what? From what? I hold a microphone. I don't lift anything heavy. I'm having too much fun and I'm just, you know, in my stride right now. It took me all these years to get where I am, so I ain't about to quit. I am 70 years old. And it's terrible. God damn. My age, uh, I have, uh, there's a funny thing about that. I just don't like getting older. You know you're getting old when your insurance company sends you a half a calendar. <laughs> Damn. I'm not 20 years old anymore. I figure, you know, how many years have I got to go and how many, how many more audiences can I uh, entertain and how many more people can I make happy? I thank you for making this very enjoyable for me tonight. I hope to come back here because you are a wonderful crowd. I'm on my way back home. God bless you all, Mom, Dad, and Patty. Good night. Thank you so much. I have uh, worked the stage. I have been on radio, television, movies, and there's still a lot of stuff to do. And I'll do it, and you know, until I can't do it anymore. Bye. I'm not through yet.